Good morning, I'm Andrew Banks, current chairman of the Miseracy Working Group and day job is for Fraser Nash Research where I'm in charge of the embedded software fitted to our hybrid electric driveline. The first part of this will be a quick history of Misra, Misra C, where we got to today, a quick run through of the changes that we're announcing and releasing, and then a little bit about the plans and the future, a request for volunteers to come and take part. C language was created, as everybody knows, by Messrs Koenig and Ritchie in 1972. Uh, very soon afterwards, at Bell Labs, they realised that C actually had a lot of pitfalls, and so the lint analysis tool was created uh, and obviously MISRA derives from that. And then 1978 the, uh, the work Koenig and Ritchie C was published. 1989 C was then enshrined as ANSI C and while many people these days still say oh yes we use ANSI C, I suspect very few of you do because since 1989 ISO have taken over, um, C90 which is equivalent to ANSI C, modified in C95, uh, a big update in 99 and a smaller update in, in 2011 and there's currently work ongoing for a new version which notionally is going to be released in 2020-2021. And the comment at the bottom, very few of you probably are using ANSI C. Where does MISRA fit into this? Almost right from the start it was accepted that there were pitfalls in C. And the standardisation programme has actually made this worse in that a lot of the differences that were created at the various implementations have been actually enshrined into the standard. So there's undefined, unspecified and implementation defined behaviour, which is where people couldn't agree what the standard should say because one implementation did it one way, another implementation did it another, others, they couldn't decide what to do in the gaps in between. Then C, as we all know, you can actually do some fairly silly things with it legally. There's a few areas where people misunderstand the language and Bessie Miseracy is one solution to this. 1994, uh, a consortium mostly out of the automotive industry was put together with a small amount of government funding and produced a document called Development Guidelines for Vehicle-Based Software. These are called the MISRA guidelines. I actually can recommend these to anybody, even 20 odd years on. It predates uh, 26262 predates a lot of the standard work in ISO 12207 and similar. It actually covers a documentation process for theoretically automotive software but actually can be applied for any. Then in 98, uh, guidelines for the use of C language in vehicle based software, the first MISRA C guidelines were produced. 98, let's say, then 2004, second edition, and there was and I can use this phrase in its real use for once, a paradigm shift in that between the first MISRA C guidelines and the second, it became guidelines for the use of C language in critical systems, not just automotive. Then 2012, we produced the new version, uh, which brought us more up to date to the, the C99 version of the language. Little diagram showing the potted history of, of where we got to, starting from the original work at Ford and Rover, MISRA C98 was adopted by JSF for their coding standards, which then fed into the production of the C++ MISRA guidelines. And the vision. And this is where I, I reiterate, this is not just about automotive. It's about safety-related software in any application with high integrity. We'll come back to this, and especially the word safety-related, a little bit later. 2012, what we tried to do there, we ended up creating more rules, but on the whole they're much more focused, more targeted than some of the early ones. So a step forward in trying to be a more coherent, targeted look at the, the problems of the C language rather than some of the broad brush approaches that were adopted before. And that's a method that we are looking to do moving forward. Comparison of the old and the new, it's a bigger book, much thicker, more guidelines. Two big misunderstandings with C. A lot of people tell me MISRA C is only an automotive standard. Well, I spent a lot of years in the aerospace world using MISRA C. I introduced it into a number of companies. I still had a battle with a lot of them, but it's an automotive standard. Well, these two noted automotive companies at the bottom here may disagree. Now, and as I said in the vision statement, it's safety related software in any critical industry. Medical uses it, nuclear world uses it, aerospace, defence, oh yeah, and automotive. The other one, MISRA C is a safety coding standard, not a security one. Well, yeah, we say in the vision, 
safety. But that's as much uh, of where we come from. You know, it came out of the automotive world, targeted at safety. But again, that vision talks about any high integrity, high reliability system, safety or security. And at the software level, it is a distinction that is actually very, very subtle. Code that is safe is likely to be secure. Code that is secure is likely to be safe. You're unlikely, really, to be able to have one without the other at the software level. I fully accept at the system level, there's all sorts of vulnerabilities that, that are different and you can have philosophical debates about, well, if you've got a bug, should you patch it as soon as possible because that's the secure thing to do. But any mechanism of updating inherently makes the system less safe. What have we been doing of late? That's the history. What have we been doing more recently? And on the compliance side, since the first edition of MISRA C, we've had guidelines of how to achieve compliance. I hazard a guess most people don't actually read that bit. It's at the front of the book, chapters 1 to 5, chapters 1 to 6, depending on the version. Most people focus on the rules. But it gives you guidelines of how to, for example, deviate if you've got a rule that there's a problem. Unfortunately, a lot of companies still have the view you shall be 100% misery compliant with no deviations, which probably means you end up with some horrible code because you've contrived a, a mechanism just to keep your tool quiet. Now, the big chestnut, safety and security. ISO Committee WG14, which are the people that own the C standard, have created a C secure coding rules, which is ISO 17961. This is created by the people who've written the C language and will tell you it's wonderful, but they're actually ad admitting there are problems. This, being an American driven project, has the word security in there. Had it been this side of the Atlantic, it probably would have been about safety as well, but the Americans are very keen on secure. We've done some work looking at how compliant of this standard. There are 46 guidelines. 22 of them we have a rule that absolutely covers. 12 we have a rule that generally covers it, down to two that we didn't cover. And when we looked at these, one of them was, hmm, how did that one get through? And the other was, oh, yeah, we ought to do something about that one. So we decided that we would create an amendment to the MISRA guidelines to address the ones at the bottom. So we've got one new directive and 13 new rules. Hopefully that's not an unlucky number. Once these are in place, fully cover 31, broadly cover 7. And this is, for those that know MISRA rule, we, we have some that we're starting to look at that says don't use this whole block of functionality. So we, we're covered in a broad sense. The other big book out there is one called CERT C. CERT C was funded by the American Department of Defense and after being published as a book has now become more of a dynamic project via a web base. Depending which day you look there are somewhere between 90 and 100 and something rules and it's a very very dynamic baseline because they keep adding keep taking away. So we've done a, a very brief analysis we're doing more in-depth work on the published version uh, there was a conference two years ago now where it was presented, and this is where some of this work came from that uh, says that MISRA is not a security standard. Column 1, they presented the 96 CERT rules as they were, saying MISRA fully covers 36 of them, um, doesn't cover 41 of them. We've done analysis against the published book. Our analysis is slightly different, not least of which the total is different, but we're covering this a little bit further. The key point that we need to emphasise is of the 33 that there's not an explicit rule against, most of them are actually covered by some of our don't use this function because actually it's not good function to use. It's full of unspecified implementation defined un and such like behaviour. So generally in a, a safe or secure system actually you don't really want to be using it at all. But more on that in due course. Today we are publishing four documents, compliance work and some specific permits. This won't mean much to you at the moment, but as part of the deviation process, they are some explicit, if you like, MISRA approved deviations. And this stems from work we've done with JAMA, the Japanese Automotive Manufacturers Association, who some of you may be aware of, have had one or two issues with regulatory bodies of, of their coding. Um, and what they're trying to do is say to their supplier base, you shall be MISRA compliant except for, you may deviate in these areas. And, and this is the big driver behind 
this work. So that's two documents. The bottom two here, the matrix showing how MISRA C 2012, as it is currently published, complies or addresses all the vulnerabilities identified by the C Secure document. And then the amendment one, which is our response to that. What are we doing as well? Oh, as I mentioned, we're looking at CERT C. We have a, a philosophical issue with CERT in that it's very, very broad ranging. It defines a lot of their directives as don't do this unless you have to. That makes them quite difficult to write tools to implement, quite difficult to enforce. MISRA tries where we can be very decidable and very focused with our rules. There's, there's a lot of work to be done in that area and conversations have been made with people at CERT of how possibly maybe we can some way collaborate in bringing the two together. That's not saying it will do, I'm not saying it won't do, but we're trying to come together as a more of a pan-industry approach. For those that are using 2012, it's three years since it's been published, we found a few things wrong. The user community has found a few things, words that could be improved, so we will be doing a TC sometime this year, maybe early next year. And the, the short-term roadmap is that we're issuing this document today, this document's being issued today, this document's issued today, this will be issued soon, sometime after the TC has been issued, we will do a roll-up of the MISRA C document. It will be an incremental of the current document. It will not be a wholehearted restructure, which previous updates have been. I want to get away from the fact that next time you buy a MISRA C document, it's very, very different from the previous one, and so you spend months trying to map the two together. It will be incremental improvement. After that, there's a number of items that we're looking at. Since we've published the MISRA C 2012, the ISO panel have published their C11 standard. So we've got to look at that. It's quite helpful in the fact that there's a fairly small number of, of areas, and I'll come on to those in a moment. MISRA C uh, historically has focused on the freestanding implementation, a, an embedded system where we're dealing with a small box and we're talking directly to the processor. We don't really deal with operating systems. And more and more boxes now are coming with an operating system of some sort, whether it's Android, whether it's a custom OS. The split between the freestanding and the hosted, we need to look at how we can cover that gap. So we're looking at that too. And then there's the third one, which is a big project, is actually looking at the whole of the standard library. At the moment, and a number of them, we just say, don't use it. We need to be a bit more focused on that because people want to use some of the signal features. They want to use some of the standard lib that talks to the, the OS. We're going to try and, and creep out of our, our focus on the hosted into the OS side as well. We're also looking at CERT, as we've mentioned. Um, CWE is another area of, that for those that have looked at CWE, it's one of the most tedious books I've ever read. All sorts of vulnerabilities and all sorts of language. But some of them, there will be an implication on C that maybe we haven't otherwise considered, so we'll be looking at that. And then anything else that creeps up. You know, we've got to keep our finger on the pulse. And most importantly, you know, the user community out there are people that can tell us where we've got something wrong they can tell us where we've got it right, which is also nice, but also other areas they might like us to look at. So C11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, particular areas that were added to the standard. There were, there were a few small changes elsewhere, but largely it was these, the addition of these. The top two on atomics and multi-threading clearly have a consideration in safety and secure systems, especially those with an operating system. The others, not so sure, but we're, we're looking at them and in due course we'll, we'll start pushing out some updates to bring these areas into the standard. So, in summary, MISRA C is widely respected. It's a safety-related coding standard, yes. It is also applicable as a security coding standard. It's evolved from being designed for automotive into a pan-industry document. We will continue to evolve new additions to the standard and to other constraints and we welcome feedback from the user community and people who'd like to actually join us and help uh, improve this document. So, any questions?